Hey guys, welcome to my September 9th DVD update. It's exactly two weeks since my last update. Here I am again to show you the DVDs I've gotten over the last two weeks. The first DVD is one I got sent, and it's the 20th anniversary Chucky's birthday edition of Child's Play. And this isn't actually just like another edition to get, just to get. It's actually for once the movie is in widescreen. The old um, MGM DVD that came out when DVDs were relatively new, I think it was at least 99 maybe 2000, probably about 99, 98 maybe, it was in full screen and there has not been a reissue of anything since. And this looks really good. I mean, they didn't release it on, on high def or Blu-ray, the Blu-ray high def, but um, it does look very good and actually has commentary with Alex Vincent, who played, you know, the kid in it, and um, Catherine Hicks. And, you know, it, I was watching through the features and stuff. It's actually definitely one to pick up if you like the movies. And out of all the Child's Play, I think I like this one, the second one, best. The third one is like a Shits and Giggles movie that was kind of took a weird direction. And then after that, Bride of Chucky was alright. I thought it was pretty good, but Seated Chucky took was good and all, but it took it to a more comical level. And, you know, with these, they at least had a creepy level to them. And now they're doing the remake of these. And I don't know who else could play Chucky, Chucky but Brad Dorf, but of course, they're, you know, replacing him, and they're apparently talking about... I don't know who they said is going to be Chucky. They should just have him do the voice again, because, I mean, it's just a voice. They could always have somebody else in the beginning or something. Another one that I got, and I was waiting for this. This came out maybe a month ago, but it took forever for to get me to get it for some reason this time. It's Are You Afraid of the Dark? The last complete season. It's the last season. It's season seven. And as you know, this is the newer version of newer series of Are You Afraid of the Dark. They did, I think, five of the original, and then the show went off the air for like three or four years. Then they brought it back with all the kids replaced, except for um, that Daniel Destano, that one who was the younger brother who came on by like season three of the original one. But the one thing that was cool about this season was they had one episode where all the kids acted in it. Like for once, they actually took the you know the ones at the campfire and actually put them in an episode, which they never did with the original series. And they also brought back the older brother, and he acted in this. And he had I think now he's like a news weatherman or something for the Canadian news or something. But um, the these the episodes in this season, a lot of them were not that. I mean, some of them were good, some of them were just all right. I think this show kind of went downhill when they brought it back. Some of them were all right. The music always had, for the most part, they used that cool, like, like out of date music. It was even slightly out of date when they used it in the '90s. This like '80s style cool synth music, which always made the show. Um, there was one or two episodes in this season that almost seemed like they might have been made years before because they really seemed old. It was I liked. I think the best one was the kids who bought the car. And then it was like this drag racing thing or something. I don't know. I thought that was the best one. And if, and you can only get these from Canada. So you have to go to Amazon.ca or any Canadian site. This one, not that many people probably know is out. But it's from this Burn On Demand quality. It's, a, it's an official DVD from Nickelodeon. But Nickelodeon, I guess, doesn't want to take the chance of releasing these in stores. Because I don't think since Pete and Pete did not sell well and neither did Clarissa, I guess they figured there's no point in losing money. Although I think this one would sell well. I don't know. And it's Doug, the complete first season. I'm going to be getting the second season at some point. The one I'm really excited to get to is the Rocco. Although those are not going to be um, the full season they're going to be best of. And basically what these are is they're DVD-R discs. Which you could like make most people like make themselves the blue on the bottom, but they they seem they're exactly the same as a regular DVD. They're, the picture quality is good. They don't have any like burn-in thing that says Nick Rewind or anything weird. They're like they look the episodes look better than I think I've seen them look. So I think they're probably from the master tapes that Nick I mean gave to um, Amazon. Basically, what they do is when you order it, Amazon burns the discs. And I think people can even sell their films to this type of thing um, and sell them through Amazon. The next one I got, and this is one I, I looked at, I think, and it was like $25 at first. And now it came like reissued. And I think it, I got it at Walmart for $9.99. It's called Grizzly Park. And I really like this a lot. And it's from um, American World Pictures, one of the distributors. And I realized this is one of the companies that's going to 
be internationally distributing the movie that I did with Synthetic Cinema Banshee. So definitely whenever Banshee comes out, I'll let you all know. But this movie was very, I really liked this. It was about these kids that went out on, I guess it's these kids that were sort of like screw-ups and they went to jail and they got off, but like off of the crime, but they said you have to go out into this wilderness survival thing or and learn. It's like one of those things they do to these, like, they weren't really kids though, they were more like 20 something and up and they make them go out in the woods and camp and I guess they were supposed to like make them learn teamwork or something. And one thing you notice is there's a lot of people in this you're gonna, you recognize from other things. It's not like people you had never seen before. They even had that one old guy who was like in everything. When you see him you're gonna be like, you're not you're not even going to believe it because he was like he's in everything you've seen like this character actor who's been in like at least 400 movies or something but this is about these kids and they encounter this killer bear and there's one scene when they're playing this really cool like kiddish like song sort of like almost like a raffy kind of song when they're all like getting out of the van meeting up for the first time and ready to go out camping i don't know definitely whoever did this movie you did a very good job and you got a, a true thumbs up and I definitely would like to see more of movies from you, and maybe even your Grizzly Park 2. Well, one can hope. The next one I got is Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe Collection 3. And I know some people, I don't know if people like the show or not, I always liked it. I thought, though, the jobs got less dirty as they went along. For some reason, like the newer ones are not as disgusting as they were in the beginning, because I'm guessing they're really running out of the disgusting ones. Unless, like, because in the beginning, he was doing real disgusting stuff. Some of these were just like, you know, stereotypical, like, you know, cleaning a bridge and stuff. I mean, it's dirt, like a dirty job in a way, but you know, like nothing like real severe about it. The next one I got, and I'll never watch again, because well, as I mentioned before, my dog Max passed away, and it was after 11 years, and I, I watched this movie, like, the day before it happened or something, and, I don't know, it just depressed me, so I don't even want to talk about it. It's called The Promotion. But it's like, I'm, I sort of just want to hide it behind the wall and not think about it. The next one I got is The Three Stooges Collection, Volume 3, from 1940 to, 40, 1940 to 1942, and I have the other two ones. This season didn't have as many of my favorite ones. I'm waiting for the next one because there's there's all these episodes that they've not put on DVD from the later ones. This one has good ones, but there's ones like when they break into a safe and they eat this, bite down this thing and break their tooth and Curly has to go to the dentist and he's walking up and down on the top bunk going, my tooth, oh my tooth. Some of those episodes in the later, later years of it were hilarious. But definitely, this is definitely something to pick up, though, if you like the Three Stooges. And they, the DVDs are cleaned up so well, and they look really, like, I don't know, they, they, I think they turned them into high definition, to the, at least because they remastered in that. So they really do look good. The next one I got, and I have the widescreen DVD from England of this on a region-free disc, but I wanted an American version, although this version is not in widescreen and I don't know why Disney is not just putting everything in widescreen now because I mean everybody now has what I mean at least most people are getting widescreen TVs or will have them in the next like four years so it makes sense to go to that and they it's shipwrecked which is one of my favorite movies and I always wondered like I, I used to always think maybe it was dubbed over it's not though but one thing that was always kind of funny was Sorry about that. What I was saying was that this kid that goes out because his dad comes back and like screws his leg up. He did something. I never could figure out fully what he did. He, he like caught it in a line or something. So he goes out to pay the debt for the family to pay for their farm. There's all these. And then he goes out there and this guy, and I always forget what his name is. No, Gabriel O'Brien. He like is a pirate and goes undercover. I don't want to fully explain this movie. I just want everyone to watch this. It's this movie that I've always loved, and I always remember seeing it in the theaters. Then afterwards, for some reason, I wanted to go out and buy Lego, the Lego tre Lego treasure kit with the gold. It was always this. I always remember that. The next one I got is one that I highly recommend, and I I looked at Best Buy. And it was already gone. I think they only got one or two copies, and it's called Homesick. And this movie is absolutely, I, I just, I can't tell you how much I like this. It's a total throwback to 80s, like, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2, those kind of films. Um, it's about, like, these group of kids that are in their house sort of, like, screwing around, 
and then they get a knock at the door and it's this sort of salesman this looking guy and it's Bill Mosley and there's scenes of Bill Mosley when he's walking through the halls I don't know it almost looked like he was being dragged or something I think it was the way he was walking or something but he comes in there and he's got these real white painted teeth which he was a great character and I think his stuff was only shot in the day but it, I don't know he, it made the movie his scene but he had this white teeth and he took out this brief, big briefcase and it was filled with all razor blades that was it and he would take the blades and cut his arm and basically he would say ask people who they hated or who they disliked and then he'd cut their arm for some like you don't know why but it turns out he cut his arm and then those people start dying one by one and you know this is just so much you just you just have to watch this if you like old heart school horror films you will love this and there's also the music in this is so fucking good this this zombie group who did the music you know you need to keep doing music they i mean i can't i've never heard anyone else who can make synth music that cool and that 80s and that you know retro styling without like adding cheapness to it or like some cheap silly gagness to it you did a great job and they also you did the i think they did the music for Murder Set Pieces. And Murder Set Pieces was just an alright movie, but the music was great. But definitely, definitely pick this movie up if you can find it. And this one people keep asking me about. And he had another movie that he did that came out today that I was looking at it, and I don't, it was like, if anyone's seen it, let me know if it's worth getting in any form, called Seed. And, and this one's called Uwe, Uwe, however you say his name, Uwe Ball, whatever, Uwe Balls, whatever. His name, <laughs> Postal. And let me tell you, I, this movie was so fucking boring, I fell asleep to it. And I, you know, I like cheesy movies and stuff, and some of this was alright, but it just was a piece, piece of crap. Everything he does, that this, you know, he does sucks. I don't think I've ever watched anything except for that House of the Dead, which was watchable because it was so bad, slightly it was good because I like Clint, Clint Howard was in it, but that was about it. And this is like about, like, these... It's about like Osama Bin Laden trying to catch these toys. I couldn't even figure out what was going on with it. It was just so bad. And I, they got um, Dave Foley to be in it. And I'm a fan of Dave Foley, you know, from It's Pat and the Kids in the Hall. And then he, he, Dave Foley did a full frontal nude scene in this. I don't know what he was thinking doing that. Sorry again, I was saying he did a full frontal nude scene in this movie, and I don't know what he was thinking doing it for this. I mean, it, it's not film bad or anything. It's just boring as shit. And it's there's nothing there's nothing really special or like must watch about this, and I mean I don't know why he keeps making these fucking video game movies I don't, I don't know it's just I don't even play these video games it's just it's getting tiresome. The next one I got was and this was I mean people said that it was not as good and and I was hoping it'd be interesting and it really wasn't and it's called Where in the World Is Osama Bin Laden. I don't know it's all right it's like about them trying him. Morgan Spurlock, who did Super Size Me, who I like, which movie I liked, and he also did 30 Days, which is a really good show when they take one person and put him in like a different job or a different lifestyle for 30 days. This is alright. I mean, there's really not much to say about it. I, there really isn't. And these two I got, because I like these, those big 50 movie sets. It's from Pendulum Pictures. There's two of them. I got Mortuary of Madness and Catacombs of Terror and these are these really 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 independent movies and like some of them are like they're like most of them are like these so bad they're good movies and this one has um the two movies that the um the one guy who's the producer of the synthetic cinema movies produced Trees and Trees 2 so if you want to check out this one they're on this set but I think the I mean I watched through some of these and I thought they were all right I don't, and I think most of these movies come from brain damaged films. I can't exactly figure out how how it works. And one of them, and I don't know if the company realized this, but in one of them, like, it has different, it has like copyrighted music or something. I couldn't figure out what was going on because I watched, um, and I have an older set of this, and the same movie is on the old set. It's like something about, um, I don't know, what was it called? Like bikini girls or something on some kind of a planet or something with and, and like Bimbo's BC or something like that. And it has totally different music. I don't think it was copyrighted. I think it was maybe music that they 
made that was in something else, maybe it's public domain, but the music was di like different music tracks on both the versions, which was kind of weird. And these are some cheap ones that I got, like dollar DVDs. I got this Alfred Hitchcock 4 pack one, which you make it in, Sabotage, 39 Steps, Easy Virtue, and this thing, I don't even know what it is, The Price of Eden. I just I just buy these dollar things, and this is one of uh, an asylum movie. Um, Lee Scott's Dragon. I don't know anything about these. And I got some five dollar ones. I'll show you the two things, the three things I got today. I got Spawn for five dollars. And one thing that's funny about this movie, and I don't think anyone even remembers, it was PG thirteen when it came out, and now and they made the R rated one. It's almost like they changed their mind later. But that was the only way they wanted it to be seen again. And Vampire in Brooklyn, which was a movie that um, Wes Craven directed, which most people sort of forgot about, with Eddie Murphy as this vampire in Brooklyn, and he was—I think he was playing multiple characters in it. And I, and I didn't get to watch this one. I'm waiting to. What a butt! And it's Phantasm Oblivion. Says so Phantasm Four Oblivion. I don't think anyone's ever fucking called when I did this before. It's like this is like an absolute first. This happens a lot when we do the Don Murph videos and a lot when we do the death shows. We have to pretend like, oh, Mr. Anastasia, Mr. This, answer the phone, whatever, we play it off. But I can't do anything now. <laughs> and um, this one I got, and it's another one of these Disney ones. And I, I think I might have watched this as a kid. It's called Treasures of the... Mata, tre, no, Treasure of Matacumbe. And it has this sort of like weird, queer, odd... Like song amazing, like Treasure of Matacumbe. I don't know, very weird. And the lens I got today was this one I was waiting to see for a while, and I didn't get to watch these because I just bought these about two hours ago. And it's Jamie Kennedy, I think he's hostess or something. It's called Heckler, and it's about all these comics and the actors and stuff who's always like get their stuff shit on. And I think Carrot Top's in it, talking about Shaman of the Board and all these people that like got duped on for their problem, for their movies and what they've done, the choices they made with stuff. And for some reason, I always liked Shaman of the Board for some reason. I don't know wh know what my problem was, but I always thought it was slightly funny in like a in like a strange way. And I got another one of these came out. And I don't even think this was supposed to come out today. I think this is out the wrong date. I, I'm not sure, though. It's out when the chipmunks go to the movies. Daytona Jones and the Pearl of Wisdom. It has date, and it also has um, Batmunk and Robomunk. I don't think I have these ones yet. I don't remember. I have all of them on tape, though. And this one I got today because um, my parents wanted to watch it, too. It's They brought it to America. Um, and I have not ever seen the original series, and I wanted to watch at least one season of the original series to get an idea of what the characters were. It's called Little Britain, and it's coming to America, and I watched the 10-minute HBO preview of it. It's called Little Britain USA, and it was hilarious. I mean, I, I thought it was really funny. Rosie O'Donnell was in the one, and it was like, are you fat because you're a lesbian, or are you a lesbian because you're fat? This one woman was asking her that it, when she was at this fat club meeting with all the fat people trying to lose weight. It was, it was funny, though. But def this I have not seen this version, though. If you're from England, you probably can tell me about it a little bit. But um, definitely check out the Little Britain USA when that comes on. Anyway, um, thanks a lot for watching the DVD update, and see you all in about two weeks.